In this video, we will replace the motor encoder PCB on this LX200 Classic Telescope's right ascension axis drive. The procedure is very similar for the drive on the declination axis. In addition to soldering equipment, we will need these hex wrenches. A 964 to remove the two mounting bolts holding the drive in the telescope. A 332 for removing the PCB itself a 5 64ths in case we need to adjust the set screw for worm gear tension, and if we're working on the declination axis drive, we'll need the 1 16th inch wrench to remove the three tiny screws holding the drive's cover onto the fork arm. This is the drive assembly we'll be working with. It includes the encoder PC board, which we'll be replacing, gearbox, the motor, spring and set screw underneath for tensioning the worm and the worm itself. We'll need to keep track of a few loose parts. These all need to be back in place before we finish. The mounting bolts for the assembly body, which we've already removed. The tensioning set screw and spring, which we won't need to remove, however the spring might pop out on its own and the cap screw for attaching the PCB itself along with the spacer underneath which can roll away. This connector looks like it was glued on, so we'll need to carefully cut it loose. This was probably added after manufacturing. It looks like silicone or a hot melt adhesive. We'll use several low force passes and keep our body parts out of the path of the sharp hobby knife. We've now cut through enough to carefully remove the connector. This brown gel looks like some kind of flexible cement that was applied over the wire connections, and we'll have to remove it before desoldering those wires. It's going to take a little bit of time. Sometimes hot melt glue is used here, which is more brittle and less sticky. With that done, we're ready to detach the PCB from its base using our 3 seconds inch hex wrench. We'll set the screw and the spacer aside. When we examine the rear side of the PC board, we see that it has some kind of double stick tape on there. It's not needed and it's usually not present. We'll note down the positions and colors of the soldered wires. You could also just take a photo. Since some colors are duplicated, we'll mark the short ones that go off to the Hall Effect sensor so we don't mix those up. The two black wires at the end are both ground and can go back in either position. To hold the PCB steady, we've just clamped it edgewise to the drive housing which is heavy enough to stay in place. We apply the soldering iron to the back side and pull the wires out from the top side. These three Hall effect sensor wires are not present on the declination drive. To reduce our frustration when soldering the new board in, we'll pretest each wire to make sure it inserts easily into its hole and trim up any crooked strands that might interfere. We've pre-soldered the holes on the new board so that we can just melt the solder and insert the wires. We've also applied flux to the wires to make sure we get good attachment. To hold the board in place while we solder, this time we'll simply screw it into its place on the drive assembly on top of its spacer. Now we apply the soldering iron to the edge of the hole melting the solder in the hole, and then insert the wire through the melted solder. Because of the stiffness of the wires and the close spacing, this is the trickiest part of the replacement. And it's worth spending some time looking for the right tweezers.
To make sure we've got reliable connections, we're going to flip the board over and go over the wires one more time where we can visually inspect the solder joints one by one as we go. Then inspect and test the work by wiggling and pulling the wires to look for anything loose. Now all that's left is to attach the PCB back onto the drive assembly. We also want to check that we did not lose the tensioning spring. We're all done with the replacement but we still need to tune this encoder to match its optical components. Check out our upcoming video on using the ClearLine calibration tool to do that. Thanks for watching.